javelins, freelancers. Ladies, gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another update from Anthem Universe. I am but one of your hosts, Ogaz. It's been a while, but checking in with the freelancers to talk about the art of communication and, of course, what is to come. Now, Maya Angelou, the great American poet and author, once said, People will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. And indeed, feelings are currently not alien to Anthem's community. Many across the social channels have voiced their joy and frustrations with Anthem, and reflected on how they feel almost daily on the Twitters, the forums, the Reddits, and indeed across our own Anthem Universe channels. And as social media engagement has arisen throughout gaming, so too has the requirement on developers to better engage us. And although some titles manage it well, the days of running your own forums for your little game as the primary connection point, of course, have long passed. So today, after discussions with Bioware at EA Play, I wanted to discuss a little bit about where Anthem is going, justify the communication we're currently seeing, and reflect on the current status. I've chosen to use these excellent developer scenes that we've received from the event in LA. These scenes are shot by community manager Andrew Johnson, of course, the one and only AJ, that show the commitment, precision, and ongoing development that you will continue to see from Bioware and Anthem in the coming weeks and months. If anything, it's a really good snapshot of what's going on behind the scenes. Now, in modern times, the social media machines of Twitter and Reddit have become the established discourse between gamer and creator. And feedback in these networks can go largely unmoderated. Now, between these, the vast majority of players operate under zero consequence for framing their issues amongst a sea of abuse. Whilst moderators do their best and developers are pretty much often unable to beat gamers to the punch. Yet this makes the stressors on developers even greater. We have seen tensions with developers before. Hello Games, of course, with No Man's Sky. Bungie with Destiny, etc. But as with Anthem, and indeed the above cases, developers don't always address these concerns immediately. And directly. But why? Is it ignorance? Is it intentional strategy? Could it be that developers of today have simply internalized the industry's negativity? And I think it's quite possible. Just one example that I came across recently was of a game dev that will go unnamed for now. And it says, if I quit game dev, it won't be because of money or lack of love of the craft. It'll be because of the attitude of the vocal 0.1% of gamers who nobody can moderate. And it's an interesting point. It certainly raises lots of questions, but uh, the one point that I take away from a lot of these feelings from developers is that negativity and abuse become the cost of making video games. I repeat, negativity and abuse becomes the cost of making video games. Now let's be clear, this does not excuse the challenges we have seen with Anthem. I do not refer to the load times or bugs and concerns with loot that freelancers have frequently raised, but rather the insidious nature of articles and hot takes of the current state of play that we pretty much see on the daily. And there was an excellent quote I observed that I think addresses some of this a little bit quite well, and it was by a Redditor, the Madman Labs, and he says, Engaging this community at this point in time without having anything to show is like standing in front of a herd of mad cows and hoping they'll behave because you talk to them. It becomes this stalemate. Is it a developer's strategic move not wanting to ruffle gamers' feathers and preemptively release incomplete information versus an unwavering hive mind of gamers and YouTubers wanting everything right now. This approach and angst in turn shapes, vocal minority or not, the subculture of developer communication. It therefore becomes a cyclical problem, chicken or egg, if you will. Now with all this said, what is Bioware doing and should I have faith? In a word, yes. Update 1.2.1 rolls out today, and whilst the patch notes will show bug fixes, the update contains a series of fixes and updates that are coming for future content and more on the Cataclysm. Additionally, there is a plan to leverage the Cataclysm exercise across escalating stages that will occur over a series of weeks. Now more will be made public on that very shortly. So what are our takeaways as a community? to reflect on some of our hopes to come. I think sometimes hearing why something was or not included uh, or its particular direction was taken helps humanize an otherwise inaccessible industry. I think this transparency could help Anthem moving forward. 
That said, gamers aren't owned explanations for actions taken. We don't own the idea, we pay for the right to access and play a developer's vision. We do not pay to directly control the game's direction. However, future dialogue with your player base, explaining what is to come and not, can go a long way. Many freelancers have asked, why do you stay? And I've heard all sorts of rhetoric from different community members. Stockholm Syndrome, sunk cost fallacy, the addictive short and fun gameplay loop, making Hello Kitty javelins. But for us, it's the information that we've been given at EA Play, it's the conversations we've had with Bioware developers, and it's the confidence that we see from both Bioware and EA in the recent weeks that solidify our faith in what is to come. Should everyone get that information? Sure. Is it always the right time? No. Can we expect more? Absolutely. Is that enough for you as a freelancer? I leave that for you to decide. We're going to leave it there. If you like what we do at Anthem Universe, please keep in touch. Jump in on the Discord, which is discord.anthemuniverse.com. Follow us on the Twitter, of course, which is at Anthem Universe. And of course, like and subscribe. We'll have more content coming, in particular, some look at the environment art, which I'm particularly fascinated in with Anthem, along with some more information, of course, on the coming Cataclysm and updates to come. Thank you for joining us this fine evening, morning or afternoon, where you are. I will leave it at that. I am Ogaz for Anthem Universe. Javelins, freelancers, we will see you next over the wall.